Hi all, hope we're safe and well. Uh, today we're going to have a look at, hopefully what's going to be quite a short video, looking at the start of Act 2. So we're going to look at two scenes in particular. We're going to look at the prologue, which occurs at the start of each act, um, and then we're going to have a look at the first scene of Act 2. So this is basically just going to be a run through of the opening of this second act of the play and looking at its significance and looking at where we're going to go from there. Okay, it's important to remind ourselves where we've just come from. So the end of Act 1 ends on this suspenseful cliffhanger. We've just had the Capulet's party, and we've just had Romeo and Juliet meeting each other for the first time, which has been built up throughout Act 1, uh, the preparation for these two characters to meet for the first time. And at the end of Act 1, we have the revelation that they um, come from different families, and the two characters realising that they've now fallen for someone who should be their enemy. We have Romeo saying, my life is in my foe's debt, um, suggesting that his uh, life is now forfeit because he, he owes everything to his enemy. And Juliet responding with, um, my only love sprung from my only hate. It's setting up the scene really, really nicely that these characters are the star-crossed lovers mentioned in the first prologue at the start of Act 1. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is just to read the prologue and to look at the significance of this. If we remember, the prologue at the start of Act 1 is there to introduce the story to the audience, and the, the prologue actually tells the audience what is going to happen. The purpose of the prologue at the start of Act 2 is more of a reminder. It's setting the scene of where we're at with Romeo and Juliet's relationship and um, reflecting that and saying that this is where we are at um, at this point in the story. So if we just have a quick listen. Now old desire doth in his deathbed lie, and young affection gapes to be his heir, that fair would be for love grown for and would die, with tender Juliet matched is now not fair. Now Romeo is belie beloved and loves again, alike bewitched by the charm of looks, but to his foe supposed he must complain, and she steal love's sweet bait from fearful hooks. Being held afore he may not have access, to breathe such vows as lovers used to swear, and she is much in love, her means much less, to meet her new beloved anywhere. But passion lends them power, time means to meet, tempering extremities with extreme sweet. Okay, so as I mentioned previously, the Act 2 prologue is there to remind us about Romeo and Juliet's relationship and to um, put the audience in their place so they know exactly what's going on in this situation. So we have the reminder that now Romeo's love for Rosaline is completely gone. In the first line of the prologue we have, now old desire doth in his deathbed lie, and young affection gapes to be his heir. That's essentially suggesting that Romeo's old love for Rosaline is now dead and buried, and that there's somebody new, a new affection has come, has come to be the heir to his old affection. So we know that the, the love that Romeo had for Rosaline, he himself says that he um, never knew true love until he saw Juliet and that affection for Rosaline is now died and has gone away. Uh, we have lots of references to the dangers that Romeo and Juliet are now placing themselves in. Um, so we have on line seven of the prologue, Romeo says, um, it says about Romeo, his force supposed he must complain, which means his enemy is now the person that he must be there to speak, that he wants to speak to, that he wants to love. And again, on line nine, we have Juliet's um, situation. Uh, love's sweet bait from a fearful hook. We can imagine that this love is tempting as, a, as a, if it's on a hook that, that with fishing that you would use. And Juliet is tempted by this bait of love from Romeo. Um, and we got this obviously foreshadowing um, some sort of problems and issues with their relationship. Uh, we also have reference to the difficulties that they would have with meeting each other. Um, 
in line nine, we have being held for, he may not have access to breathe such vows as lovers used to swear. The fact that they will not be able to see each other because the families are enemies, the only reason they've even met is that Romeo managed to deceptively sneak into the party and uh, meet Juliet for the first time. They're, ne they're not going to be able to meet on the streets, they're not going to be able to see each other in a social situation. Um, the final line of the prologue is quite a significant one. It could be quite an interesting one to look at now, the idea of contrasts, because we have um, passion lends them power, time means to meet, and in this line, tempering extremities with extreme sweets. So the idea of extremities is means the extreme danger that they're going to be facing, they're going to be putting themselves in, and the extreme sweet is the extreme love that they feel for each other. So we have this contrast of danger and love, violence and love, which we see throughout the play, um, paralleling and uh, contrasting with each other. And then it's no more shown uh, than in Romeo and Juliet's relationship. Okay, the first scene of Act 2 is a very short scene, so we're not going to spend a huge amount of time looking at it, uh, but it is quite significant as it tells us a lot about Romeo's state of mind and his relationship with his friends and his family at this point in the story. So, we've got to imagine the Capulet's feast has ended and the guests have all left. Romeo is now absolutely infatuated with Juliet and um, and can't get her out of his head, and he wants to um, to see her immediately afterwards. He wants to, to get back in to the party and go and speak to Juliet. So he leaves with his friends, he leaves with Mercutio and Benvolio. And um, as they're leaving, Romeo sl slinks away and starts to climb the orchard wall to get back into Capulet's mansion. So we have uh, Romeo entering alone and saying, can I go forward when my heart is there? Turn back dull earth and find their centre out. So what Romeo is essentially saying is, I can't leave now. I need to go back to where my heart is. I need to turn around and um, go back to my centre, to my to my core, to back to the person who's going to be the centre of my life. So he, he turns around and he um, starts to climb the wall. We have Benvolio and Mercutio um, calling out to him, asking where he is. We have Benvolio's Romeo, my cousin Romeo, Romeo, and Mercutio. He is wise. He has stolen him home to bed. Mercutio thinks he's actually gone, just slunk off back home to bed. But Benvolio has seen him leaping over the orchard wall and he tells Mercutio to shout him. So what we're seeing is Romeo's being reckless. Um, we talked in the prologue about how this is going to be a dangerous relationship if it's going to continue. And Romeo's already starting to take risks with that, leaping back over the orchard wall, sneaking back into somewhere where he would be um, killed on sight as a Montague. Uh, in particular, we've got to think about Tybalt from the party in Act 1, Scene 5, where he's sworn revenge on Romeo for what he sees as uh, disturbing the solemnity of their celebrations and, and making a mockery of the Capulet. So Romeo's taking a great risk here. Okay, so as Romeo sneaks off back to the orchard, we learn a lot about the distance now that's emerging between him and his friends. We've already seen from Act 1, Scene 1, that Romeo um, moved away from Benvolio initially when he was asked, when he was trying to find out what was wrong with him. Uh, so Romeo seems to be more isolated. He seems to be more individual than his friends, if you like. Uh, we have Mercutio at the start, uh, sorry, th midway through this scene, uh, calling out to him, Ne al conjure to Romeo, humours, madman, passion, lover, uh, appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. So Mercutio is almost literally calling him mad with love and saying how he is um, a, a, a driven by passion. He's driven by passion responses to love. Um, Mercutio doesn't know about the relationship with Juliet, but he, he can see this madness in Romeo that's driving him away, and he's calling out to him, telling him to come back, and to be sensible, to be rational, to be reasonable. What we're seeing is Romeo not being reasonable. We're seeing Romeo being reckless and dangerous uh, in the nature to his, to his love. Uh, we again see the distance because Mercutio thinks that Romeo is mad for Rosaline, who was, um, 
also meant to be at the party. So he, he, he says that he'll conjure you by Rosaline's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot straight leg and quivering thigh, and the dimness that is that adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appears to us. So we're seeing that distance, that Romeo's now moved to, to Juliet, and he's so infatuated with Juliet, and his friends are still thinking that he is uh, obsessed with Rosaline and still stuck in this old, older relationship. The scene ends with um, Mercutio and Benvolio um, hopelessly calling out to Romeo and realising that he's not going to return. Uh, Mercutio says that um, this tr my truckle bed, this field uh, bed is too cold for me to sleep. So he uses a pun. So Rome, uh, Mercutio is quite clever with the use of language. He's talking about like a flower bed and saying, I can't sleep in a flower bed. Don't be ridiculous, this is too cold for me. I'm going home to bed. Um, and Benvolio, again, reflects what he's been saying in Act 1, that um, it is in vain to seek he that means not to be found. If Romeo wants to be alone and wants to be isolated, there's no point calling out for him. Uh, we'll, they'll just have to leave and hope that he turns up in the morning. So at the end of Act 2, Scene 1, we have Romeo climbing the orchard wall and his friends hopelessly calling out for him, trying to tempt him back with talk of Rosaline. Um, and then ultimately deciding that if he doesn't want to be found, they're just going to have to leave him and we'll hopefully see him in the morning um, and they'll leave. So the end of Act 2, Scene 1, we have Romeo making this reckless decision and his friends abandoning him and leaving him there. What I'd like you to do for me is to have a look at the prologue and Act 2, Scene 1 together to find at least five quotations across these two short scenes where we get a sense that the relationship between Romeo and Juliet is going to be challenging and going to be dangerous. Now, this could be something from the prologue, which is, again, giving us the, the recap on what's been going on and... Um, where the relationship is, or it could be to do with behaviour, how Romeo behaves, or it could be potentially to do with how the other characters react to that, how Mercutio and Benvolio react to that. So five key quotations, and just annotate with at least a couple of ideas about what this is revealing about the recklessness of the relationship, and how... Um, how dangerous it could potentially be. This is important because the next scene, which is Act 2, Scene 2, is a, is a longer and more important scene with Romeo and Juliet reconvening and meeting after the party uh, and obviously making their plans for uh, the rest of their lives. So that's going to be a, a, a bit more detailed, but the recklessness and the danger of this relationship is important to get our heads around. So if you could look at those five key quotations, it would be great. Uh, stay tuned to the end of this video and we've got today's film recommendation. Okay, for today's film recommendation, um, I've gone for a slightly older film, um, looking at a mockumentary. So it's a fake documentary following a fictional um, rock band on a tour of the United States, and that is This Is Spinal Tap. If you've not seen it, it is absolutely incredibly funny. Um, really um, brilliant set pieces. Um, just the fact that the, the band's tour goes from bad to worse to dreadful very very quickly uh, some amazing scenes it's by a couple of the guys who went on to write for the simpsons um and it's just sensational uh, a really funny look at the way that the music industry works uh, so it is a gem go and check it out uh, next time we're going to be looking at act two scene two which is again one of the most important scenes in the play um commonly referred to as the balcony scene and um, so until then 
and take care um, and look after yourselves. <laughs>